Chris McConnell with Locomotive Systems Training. How are you doing today? Uh, today we're going to talk a little more about, about air brakes. Uh, let's take a look here. This is air brake circuits. Remember, this is a 26L air brake system. Automatic brake circuit uh, application position. This is LSTV-044. So let's take a look at that. All right. So what we had from the previous time, we had the automatic brake valve handle in the release and recharge position. Uh, a lot of uh, air brake uh, companies will tell you that there is no such thing as a release and recharge position. And I get that. But what I do is I want you to get in your head that in this one handle position, you're in release. But that's also the only same position we're going to recharge the air brake system nowhere else. Hence, I use the term release and recharge. All right. So, you're driving this train down the track. Everybody's happy. And we know we got a curve coming up. We've got to slow this train down. So, what we'll do is we'll take the automatic brake valve handle. And we'll move it from release and recharge, say, into the minimum service. But what we've done, we've actually gone to full service. We went from 90 pounds of brake pipe. We made a 25-pound reduction of brake pipe from 90 pounds down to 65 or 25-pound reduction. <clears throat> so <clears throat> the first thing that happens, number one, the handle moves. Number two, as a result of the handle moving, all the brake pipe. Remember, let's say this is a uh, three-unit consist with 150-car trains. From that last box car or flat car or gondola car or tank car, whatever that last car is, all the way to and through those three unit consists and out that lead locomotive of port Y, we're gonna we're gonna drain off 25 pounds of pressure in that line that was normally set at 90. So it's gonna go from 90, 85, 80, uh, 75, 70, 65. And when every car and every locomotive brake pipe finally reaches 65 pounds, then the, the valve inside the regulating valve will shut off, port Y will close, and we will all now have 65 pounds of brake pipe air from that lead locomotive to that last car in the train. Think about it. What if I got a mile and a half long train? That is quite a drawdown of brake pipe from 90 down to 65. So if we look at our brake pipe gauge, you'll see eventually that'll go from 90 down to 65. Remember, who's the boss of that brake system? It's not brake pipe. It's equalizing reservoir in that lead locomotive only. Equalizing goes from 90 down 80, 85. What's brake pipe doing? It's doing the same thing. So when brake pipe stops at 65, or excuse me, when equalizing reservoir stops at 65, brake pipe will stop at 65. <clears throat> and our whole goal here is to draw that air down from the entire train, and every car and every locomotive has some type of a control valve on each piece of your rolling equipment. Okay? And they're all being piloted by a brake pipe signal. So we drew down, or we, we drew off 25 pounds of brake pipe, went from 90 down to 65. This control valve, ladies and gentlemen, is going to react to that reduction in brake pipe. So let's take a look and see what happens in here. Okay? The selector valve, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call the boss of that valve. Yeah, naturally it's being piloted by brake pipe either decreases or increases, but nobody in that valve moves until the selector valve moves first. He's the boss. When the selector valve moves, then everything else in there that's appropriately going to move will then move. Not until the selector valve moves. So selector valve is going to say, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to draw down 25 pounds of brake pipe on the other side of my diaphragm so I can match existing brake pipe, which is going to reposition the selector valve inside the 26F control valve. Because of that movement of that selector valve, the selector valve is going to order the control valve or the control pressure in that valve to stay at 90 PSI. Notice selector valve went down to 65. We now have 65 pounds in brake pipe, so that 25 pound reduction, and there it is right there. And what we're going to create right here, ladies and gentlemen, is a pressure differential. Okay? So if I have 90 pounds of dark green air, control air, and if I have 65 pounds of brake pipe air, I've got a 25 pound pressure differential, which is going to make that service valve move up. I don't know if you can see it real well or not, but right there, there's an up arrow inside that valve. Well, as that valve moves up, and I'm going to use my finger as a representative representation of that spool valve moving up. As it moves up, it's going to come up against what's known as an auxiliary reservoir charging check valve. It's going to open that valve up, and it's going to allow yellow air, known as auxiliary reservoir, to flow into pipe 16 and turn from yellow air into purple air. And all that yellow air, all auxiliary reservoir air is, ladies and gentlemen, is a piloting signal. <clears throat> it's a reservoir, and based on the amount of air that's coming into this purple line, or pipe 16, will determine how much pressure we send down here to the J relay valve and eventually to the brake cylinders. All right, so 
90 pounds, we have 65 pounds in selector volume to match the existing brake pipe reduction. We have 65 pounds in brake pipes, service valve moves up, yellow air flows into pipe 16, then it becomes purple air. Remember, we color the air, the air is the same color in real life, but we color the air differently to show a different type of function or what that job of that air is to do. So the yellow air turns into purple air, purple air comes into pipe 16, goes down through the pipe bracket into the quick release and back down over into the pipe bracket. Now, <clears throat> I want to show you something up here in the corner that says two and a half times reduction of brake pipe. Now, I call that magic because the magic is that the air is multiplying a signal in here. We drew down 25 pounds of brake pipe reduction, and this pipe signal that's going to come out of here is going to be two and, a half, two and a half times every one pound of brake pipe that we reduce. So if I have a 10 pound reduction, that'd be 10 plus 10 plus 5 or 25. We made a full service rate reduction of 25, so that'd be 25, 25, and 12 and a half. That would be 62 and a half pounds going into this purple line. 62 and a half, but because we have a valve up here that you don't see right now, it's called a service brake cylinder limiting valve. It's going to chop off that extra half a pound or whatever that service brake cylinder limiting valve is set at. Normally somewhere between 55 and 62 pounds. But let's just say for grins, it's 62 pounds. So I would build a pressure in here of 62 pounds. I would go, into the, go through the service portion, through the pipe bracket, again through the quick release valve, back into the pipe bracket, and now we're going to change the slide. And now, look what happened. I still have 62 pounds coming out of pipe 16. It's going to come down go over to here. There's pipe 16. It's going to go down to this 90 cubic inch volume reservoir. That's going to allow proper application and release gradient of pipe 16. <clears throat> and I did a little math here for us. And I'm old school, so you have to just bear with me. I put down 25 and 25 and 12 and a half. That just happens to be two and a half times 25 pound reduction. That gives me 62 and a half with a question mark. That question mark was where we chopped off that extra half pound. So if I have 60 pounds in this line and this reservoir here is to allow for proper application and release gradient in pipe 16, that way the brakes don't apply too rapidly and off too rapidly or apply too slowly and release too slowly. They apply just right. Now, so it goes down, pipe 16 goes into this double check valve, thunks over if we're blocking pipe 20. The pressure is greater than 16, it comes down, goes to this check valve, comes over, goes down into port EX to the 100% diaphragm only. If I've got 62 pounds here, if I have 62 pounds here, I have 62 pounds here, I'm going to have 62 pounds here. But notice on this drawing, that we don't have a double input signal like we did in the independent circuit. We only have it going to the 100% diaphragm, which means one pound in, one pound out. That's right. So if we have 62 pounds going in, I'm going to hit that button again. And oh, gee, look, red air main reservoir at that valve, the J relay valve, ready to go to work, is being piloted up. This valve operates the same way as the service valve in the automatic or the uh, 26F control valve does. Pressure differential pushes that stem up. Main reservoir, this time red air, not yellow air, will flow down into a rapid pipe, into a rapid area, a rather large area, and will have main reservoir come out and feed uh, eight brake cylinders fairly quickly, and brake cylinder will go from zero PSI up to 62, as we have a 62 pound input here, 100% diaphragm, 62 pounds, the brake supply. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a full service rate reduction. So. In the simplest form, let's look at it this way. Number one, we move the brake handle. We open up port Y. We draw down 25 pounds of air. So <clears throat> we drew down the 25 pounds of air from that first locomotive to that last car. That was step one. Actually, that was step two. Move the handle was step one. Step two, we reduce brake pipe through the entire drain. Step three, the control valve on every piece of rolling equipment, locomotives and box cars are rolling revenue. Uh, uh, adjust to that brake pipe reduction. They all send the piloting signal out to either double check valve or down to some type of valve and then they will then apply the appropriate brake cylinder pressure to each locomotive and Bosch car in that train. Pretty simple. Reduce brake pipe, create a signal, send it to a, some kind of a multiplying valve, it goes down and brakes apply. Pretty simple when you think about it. Alright, so with that being said, let's go over here. Service lap. Now, once, now again, I, I may have said it before, but it's worth repeating. What's the difference between lap and lapping? Well, let's go back one for just a second. 
Go back one, if you would, please. In the application position, this air is going, is going to be lapping. In other words, the air is still moving. Now go back to the next one, forward, and it says service lap. After all the air has done, got done flowing, that's called service lap. The air is there, it's no longer moving. The brakes are applied, I got 62 pounds on my gauge. I got pink air here. I got a, a signal feeding it. I've got a reduction in brake pipe here. And as long as I'm barring any leaks in the system, this automatic brake application that I just made in that locomotive has gone to what they call service lap. Every locomotive and every car on that entire train now has 62 pounds of brake cylinder applied to each vehicle. Pretty simple stuff. Not too tough. All right, so let's go ahead on. Again, let's take a look at the players in the game. I have a 26C automatic brake valve. This valve initiates applications and releases of both locomotive brakes and train brakes by control. And there's the key by controlling equalizing reservoir pressure, which results in controlling brake pipe air pressure increases and decreases. Remember, there's a reason why brake pipe is called pipe number one. It runs from that lead locomotive clear back to that 150th car. Think about that. That's pretty amazing. Okay, it's all controlled by that handle right there. The locomotive, lead locomotive to that last 150th car. <clears throat> that automatic brake valve takes the control valve, which consists of three pieces, <clears throat> and that is a service portion, a pipe bracket, and a quick release valve. All three of those make up the 26F control valve. And remember, this valve is used in the automatic brake circuit. It consists of those three components I just mentioned. The automatic brake valve tells the control valve what to do by simply reducing brake pipe. It's that simple. This guy responds to brake pipe reductions and also increases. When brake pipe decreases, brake cylinder increases. When brake cylinder increases, brake cylinder pressure goes to, don't say releases or reduces, it goes to zero. Because remember, all of our freight locomotives, ladies and gentlemen, run what we call direct release. Once that automatic brake valve handle goes to whatever pos uh, brake position of us, we move that handle back. Once we hit release and recharge, because we're in direct release, we're going to send a release command from that lead locomotive all the way back to that 150th car, and all the brakes will then release. Okay, let's see what else we got. Double check valve here. <coughs> uh, if we have a 2016, this valve permits directional control of a device from two different air sources without interaction between the air sources, whichever pressure is greater. That's a non-biased valve, remember, there's no spring in it. It'll respond to whatever pressure on either side of that piston is greater. If pipe 16 pressure is greater, pipe 16 is in control. If pipe 20 pressure is greater, then pipe 20 pressure is in control of that double check valve. Okay? And also, we go over here to the J relay valve. <clears throat> this is a responding type valve response to an air signal from either the independent circuit, pipe 20, or automatic circuit, pipe 16, that provides a large volume of air, which is the main reservoir air, to the brake cylinders. The diaphragm or diaphragms contained in this valve determine the output of air to the brake cylinders. So if you look at that, there's our last player in the game. It's a brake cylinder. This component converts pneumatic energy, air pressure, into a mechanical action. It provides a restart, retarding force to slow or stop the wheel. Okay, let's see what we have left. And that's it. So really, making automatic brake applications, only about three or four things happen. Not a lot, and it's not highly complex. But it's very reliable, and it's been the standard of the railroad industry for a long, long, many, many, many years. And with all the 26L equipped locomotives out there, they're going to be around for a long, long time in the future as well. So anyway, so there is your uh, locomotive brake application in its simplest form. And again, please go to our website, check us all out. Again, our website address is www.lst-ca.com. Remember, there are no numbers in our website. It's www.lst-ca.com. Thank you very much and have a safe day.